let me just start off now by simply asking each of you just to give a quick profile of yourself. Sean, you're all over the internet. I'll still get to you in a second anyway. All right, all right. But Martin, oh. you've done an enormous amount of television work. I've you... done an endless amount of television work. Just rattle through some of the great shows that you've done. Great shows. Um, uh, a lot of series television. Corelli was probably my first uh, great show that I worked on a long time ago at the ABC. I've worked on Stingers, Something in the Air, Pack to the Rafters, All Saints, Neighbours, a whole lot of shows that never got made that were in development forever. Um, I'm probably leaving some out now that I can't think of. But yeah, lots and lots of um, Aussie drama for the last 20 yeah. years. If that's a lot of um, that's a lot of high quality series television that you've done. I'm keen to know what the impulse was to make a feature film. Is it a natural thing when you're working in TV so much to want to make a feature film, or is it something separate? Um, no, it, it, wanting to make a feature film came first, and then 20 years of TV came more um, as a series of opportunities that you just kind of go with things as they come across your plate. Uh, I went through film school and wanted to leave film school and become a serious young auteur and write and direct my own features within the next six months after graduating. It didn't work out that way as it doesn't for most of us. So uh, no, I just took the first job I could in TV, which was as a runner actually on Neighbours. I did that for a while. I worked on crew, ended up um, floor managing and first ADing in TV and then went, mm, I've got to write it instead. So just um, TV is a place where you work day in, day out in mm. this country. Um, feature films are where you, you get to occasionally um, indulge yourself and hopefully give the audience something a little different to the TV fair. Sean, are you capable of profiling yourself in a paragraph or two? Oh, right. <laughs> um, I am 23, Australian, blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy. What, and very what do you need? And very busy. Uh, yeah, currently. When did yeah. you start? When did you start off? in television acting I started and have you had a weekend off since yeah I have I mean what you guys see on screen is um, not the reality there's actually a lot of auditions and waiting around that goes in between but um, I started when I was 12 I had an audition through school for a children's TV series called Lockie Leonard which I ended up getting so that was like an open casting call I didn't have an agent or anything but I ended up getting the lead in that and then an agent and then slowly worked through school until I moved to the Eastern States. It was originally to be for three months and then work came up and then I haven't left since. I'm still in Sydney. So two television veterans, fairly young, come together for a feature film. Is this the real world? How did you two guys come together to make this film? Do you want me to take that one? Yeah. So it was a, it was, um, a standard auditioning process to some degree that uh, the casting director I was working with, Alison Telford, certainly put Sean on the top of a short list after reading a script. Um, but then we still went through the process of testing pretty much everyone around your age group in Sydney and Melbourne that was around. Um, and so that's how Sean and I met, was in an, on, in an audition room. And uh, I guess we made audition quite a few times too with a few different um, girls across from you. It was about three times, wasn't it? At least, yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was, it was that process. And um, once his face got on to my little computer monitor at home and I kept looking at it, couldn't get away from it. And how would you describe the film? I'm, gonna, I'm asking this of both of you. You go first, Martin. Okay. And then uh, Sean, you can warm up. Well, it, uh, it belongs to the family of coming-of-age stories. It's a story about a teenager going through that pivotal period in your life where you go from all things sort of adolescent and youthful to a more adult realm, and it's about some of the compromises, sacrifices, hard lessons that you have to learn to make that transition if you're going to be a productive adult. Uh, it's about a school kid who arrives at a kind of an unusual sort of a high school and meets an unusual sort of a a vice principal who's determined to be a, a kind of a guardian into adulthood mm. and he's got kind of unorthodox ways of making sure that kids learn how to uh, respect authority. Sean? Yeah. How I, would you describe the film in terms of its themes? It, it's, it's, it's coming of age, but it's, it's a look at school life and, I mean, coming of age, I mean, what, you know, at the end, what is that? And I know people twice my age who I feel like haven't come of age. <laughs> um, but I think it's that thing of realising where, I mean, 
I went, I think I went through this at school too, where you get to sort of, you're, you're turning 16, 17, and you're about to come out of this place. And it's that sort of thing of realising that you've got that arbitrary um, authority. And at the end of the day, they're really just people like you and me. And there's a line that can be crossed. And um, it's an example of a teacher crossing that line. And yeah, it kind of pulls you out of this school situation into real life. And I think he's a romantic, he has a romantic idea of things, um, of the possibilities with, with the girl he meets, who's this principal's daughter. Um, but it's kind of realizing that a part of getting older is actually mistakes are useful and you should learn from them. And yeah, it, it's, it's a visceral thing that happens to him where it actually goes, man, you're, this is the real world now. To yep. use the, to yeah, use yeah. the name of the film. One of the, one of the co-writers sent me a quote recently from Oscar Wilde saying um, that you can't achieve grace in a state of rebellion. And he said, that's what your film's about. So. <laughs> and nice, the film nice is also put. very much about um, well, teacher-student relations. Now, we've all had instances where we've disliked a teacher for whatever reason. It's palpable, the hatred and the tension between student and teacher in this film. How much of that is being drawn from real life? Uh, there are some models from my distant past <laughs> that uh, that inspired me to create a character like Mr. Ricard on screen. There were definitely, in fact, to put my hand up and confess, the um, the central uh, idea of the film is is a boy um, locked in a in a d endless detention with this with this authoritarian figure who. Um, who makes him sit in his office every lunchtime and recess for a term that's drawn directly from personal experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you would have grown up with corporal punishment. So this would have been a bit more accurate, yeah, especially yeah. for you. Yeah. I got spacked around pretty good by some teachers. I for can sure. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And Sean, having been brought up though, in the rights conscious era of the nineties and the yeah. first decade of the 21st century, did you ever encounter a teacher that you disliked to the degree that your character does in the film? I had teachers who disliked me in high school, especially. One jumps to mind. Uh, I have in the back of my brain ingrained, Sean Keenan, <laughs> yelling across the oval. He always, and, I, and I, I think it was because of that thing. It's like, I did have that. I, f I guess I was maybe just at that stage. I, I felt like I knew better. And in some regards, looking back, I did. Mm. In some regards, I didn't. But, uh, you know, it's their job to, it's, it's not about that for them. It's about, you know, if you disrespect a teacher in front of the class, they're, lo they're losing traction that they've made with that class. And they have to regain that because at the end of the day, you know, you're going to move through, but they're going to keep teaching at this school and they have to have a footing. So it's, it's, it's almost like this, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a, a battle almost. But, um, you know, I, especially with... Um, when I was in primary school, I had a teacher um, who, their, their sports teacher in this film has kind of no regard for the safety of students. <laughs> and it, it might not seem, I mean, some people might have experience with that, but I remember in primary school, I had a teacher who um, told me I was, he got told by some other kids that they wanted to fight me. And instead of stopping it, he came up to me and said, you know what they're, gonna, what they're planning to do this weekend to you? And it was like, he was a kid as well. And that's what I mean about some people never growing up. So it's like this kind of thing. You, At the end of the day, yeah, teachers are just people like you and me, you know, often very dedicated people, but still just people. Because it's so. a very strong performance and the film is very atmospheric as well. I'm very eager to know, given the strength of the TV background that both of you bring to the film, what the differences were when you were making this. As a director, how was it different? And as an actor, how was it different? Um, as a director, uh, I had freedom. I didn't have a network to answer to. So um, whatever yeah. decisions I made were my own decisions. So if I, I, uh, I succeeded or failed, and it was all down to, uh, to me. So that was scary and liberating at the same time. Um, and all those little things that you want to do, you want to spend time on dialogue-free moments, let that play out, build atmosphere, all that stuff that you don't get to do in TV so much. TV is a lot of, a lot of talk, a lot of people chatty, chatty, chatty. So, and film, you know, is a chance 
to tell stories in a, in a more action-based way and less of a conversational way. So that was um, really the, the great freeing up that I experienced as a, as a filmmaker rather than as a, as a maker of television. Did you relish being able to hold shots mm. for more than a couple of seconds? Definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure Ellery Ryan, the DOP, uh, um, relished that opportunity as well, who has done TV as well. I mean, we've all done TV in this business. What about you, Sean? I'm very keen as an actor. I'm sure that you're eager to move into films. How was the experience for you in terms of the rhythm of the shoot and of the nuance you were able to put into the, the character? Yeah, well, in terms of speed, I think we shot it because you have a short amount of time. It, I'd say you shoot about as fast as, as television, but of course, television is just boom, coverage. You want to get one, you know, single, single, start, start in, move out, or start out, move in. While this was far more, the, it was Martin would come in with an image in mind and sort of work from there. So you could have those long held shots. So it's always a steady cam nearby that we could pick up. <laughs> use a steady cam lot. <laughs> and yeah. use. And so, and also um, improvisation, you know, you were very open to, there were scenes um, where we were able to add little bits and pieces. I know in the office there was, you know, we shot that in a day. Yeah. And we were able to, stuff might be written a certain length, but the beauty of working with, um, a director who's actually written the work as well is that instead of going, oh, can we maybe add this line or this line? Then, oh, we'll call the producer. Then we'll call the, you know, it's Martin's just like, yeah, or no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. And, you know, we were able to try things and some of them made it, made it in, some didn't. Yeah, um, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Definitely. I think I was just thinking about your question then. If, if I had handed... The, the, those rushes that what I'd shot on set to a producer in TV, they would have come after me with a gun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Now, why did you settle on this title? Why well, it was a, a lot of work to get to that title. Mm. Um, it's a toughie. It is a toughie. It is a bit of a mouthful, and a bit like the film itself, it just kind of it requires the audience to investigate a little bit. Um, it is a bit of a mouthful, and I got some resistance resistance from that, uh, but. I've had a few screenings now where people come up to me and said, I just love that title. Once mm -hmm. I got my head around it, it stuck with me. And I think the film is a bit like that too. Once mm -hmm. you get your head around it, and if you let it into you, it, it'll it'll sit with you for a while. And so I like that. It's slightly enigmatic and slightly poetic, just like the film. I'd like to offer an observation about the film, critical observation about the film. You set up the tension between the two main characters so strongly. And then his relationship with the girl who is the daughter of the vice principal. That really builds nicely to that point. Then the tension seems to kind of dissipate from that, given that the power situation that the student then finds himself in, hey, I've got the daughter of the guy who hates me pretty much in my sights, in my... In my. There must have been... I mean, did you initially exploit that more? Were you tempted to exploit that more? The reason why I'm saying this is because that seemed to be the way it was going. It might be a really commercial way to take the film. Did you consciously not pursue that particular we avenue? Did, we did explore that more, and we did have scenes in, uh, that we cut out between the father and daughter at home. Yeah. And there, was, um, there were a few moments where we did step away from going down there a little bit, just because we wanted to... Um, the film's a, a real balancing act between the family life and the school life. Right. Um, and I felt like ultimately this is a story about a, about a family. Mm. Um, and what happens at school is sort of a, a separate story. I, I, so it's, um, it's always a tricky balance to kind of deal with the expectations of an audience and, um, and what you give them. There are, there are moments in it that I, I know what you're saying, where you, if you feel like you're on a certain journey and then you sort of left turn yeah. a little bit. Um, and some people will find that challenging maybe well, even unsatisfying yes. and um and others will go with it um and i can't do much about the individual reactions to the film but um i th for me that was the story that we wanted to tell we wanted to tell a story that was primarily a story about a, a, about a about a boy whose experiences in the outside world really um impact upon the relationship he has with it, with the key people in his life which are his mum his little sister and his dog mm -hmm. Okay, Sean, Martin, are you ready for the challenge? 
I don't even know what the challenge is. It's the Shembury Challenge. This is where we test the resolve of independent filmmakers. It feels pretty tested already. Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> okay. All right. And I just basically throw you a couple of toughies and see how you respond. Because I'm a big shot studio executive. I've got a lot of money. I saw your lovely little movie. I appreciate how beautifully it's made for the low budget you made it on, which was how much? Uh, you tell me? Uh, very little. Um, I, I, I couldn't even give you a final figure because so much of it was done on, out of the favour bank that... Um, uh, I'm not sure what the number would be in the end. A couple okay. of bucks. A couple of bucks. Couple not for, of bucks. Not for uh, the, the catering budget of your average Hollywood movie, I would, <laughs> I, would have, I would imagine. Okay, so, I mean, just as a side note, less than a million? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to digress for a second. How, I mean, is it basically favours? You made this film for less than a million dollars. Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we didn't have any more than that to spend. So, yeah, that's how we did it. Yeah. Just quickly, what were some of the favours that would have helped you get the production values into the film that you have that belie that figure? Uh, Ellery Ryan's photography. Yeah. Where it was great value for money. Um, the sound design by Paul Parola, who's an old primary school friend. He did that very cheaply for us. Um, the score by uh, Murray Jamison, another old school friend. Did it for next to nothing. All the cast were happy to work. Yeah, the scale, you got a like, high level. You got like, a high level cast here. yeah yeah and they were all they always came on board because they liked the script and they didn't do it because and then none of, none of them kind of said oh, i'll only do it if you give me a million bucks so what did you shoot this on i shot on red epics right yeah and uh with the cutting process ben joss again believed in the project he came on as the editor and and uh worked with me very closely for a long time and did a lot of favors so unqualified kudos to you both for making it for what is in any real terms a ridiculously small amount of money. That's yeah. that's a joke. It's a anyway. small. It's the upside dog. and downside of Australian cinema, isn't it? Look, it gives it you brings freedom. people together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it d definitely does. It gives you a lot of freedom too, not having that kind of yeah. responsibility of spending okay. billions of dollars. Well, I'm a big big shot executive, and I like film, and I want to invest in film. And I've you know made a couple of uh, schlocky exploitation films myself. I've seen the movie, and I really like it. But you know what? I'd like to give you some more money so you can reshoot it. <laughs> so, so you can actually just sort of, cause I like that triangle you got between the teacher, the boy and the girl. And I would like you to exploit that more along commercial lines so that we can release it in America or at least get an American uh, producer to remake it for America. Cause we reckon <laughs> we've got a really good sort of semi thriller, erotic, romantic, <laughs> bit of violence in there. We All can right. really dial I got this, this uh, pitch for you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so when Mark runs, Mark runs away with the principal's daughter. Principal quits job, hops on a plane, and the chase begins. Yeah, Something bad. like that. That's a good idea. You can come Plus in on the. Plus, he's got uh, guns. Would, <laughs> would you like a co-writing credit on this film? Is I'd it, expect one. He's just okay. got one for that idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm a very good it. idea. <laughs> that, or you could just keep it in situ in the school and just build up the tension there. So, I would like to offer you both of you. A very lucrative deal. I'm shark going to pay tank. you. <laughs> this Sorry? is Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to offer you guys more money than than you, you got to make the film. Much more than that. More than Baz gets. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, to uh, to to uh, remake the film, Martin. Yeah, I'd love to just keep shooting that film over and over again until I get it right. That'd be fantastic. What we, is joke, it? we joked about it from time to time. Is it you the know? five obsession? The five obstructions? The five obstructions. Lars yes. von Trier. Lars von Trier. Film. Oh, yes. We could do it. We could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy too. Yeah, yeah. I like your idea. Oh, yeah, we have have him. Uh, Hell, it's one of many. <laughs> one of many. <laughs> Would you do it if someone actually did come up to you and say, "We like your film, but we want you to reshoot forty percent of it Look, and make it"? If someone came to you seriously with that, what would you say as an independent director? Um, that's a very interesting idea because um, there were things in the script that, that we weren't able to shoot. That were some things we cut out before the shoot because we weren't realistically able to do it. Yeah, time and, permits only so much. Yeah, and there was a whole, um, yeah, a whole like sort of subplots and sequences that that we just kind of weren't working either on the page or once we got on set and we realised we can't do this the way it should be done. So um, so we kind of had to shelve them. Like, the, for, for instance, the story starts with, with the character, Mark, arriving at a new school after being kicked out of a private school. We shot all the stuff of him getting kicked out of the private school. Okay. But it just never, we didn't have the production values to make it really sing. So it was, we were better off without it. I mean, how much freedom are they permitting? 
Uh, I mean, by they, I mean you. <laughs> How oh, much we, we want complete, you to, we, complete freedom. We want you to turn this into a a, a big exploitation commercial film. But uh, that's, we, that's we, the only guideline. You're going to have to be naked a lot more. I reckon you'd have to say yes to that. You're going to be yeah. naked a lot more. Well, yeah, prosthetics. I mean, what they can do nowadays, amazing. <laughs>